Welcome back. Now, ahead of the Q1 earnings season, Motilal Oswal has come out with a strategy note. So I just thought we'll quickly put out what they have to say. They're saying the sentiment in the market is upbeat, but there is no euphoria. The key drivers of the, you know, what's driven our market to all-time high levels is easing inflation, strong corporate earnings, and abundant liquidity. They're saying that even as the markets have scaled new peaks, valuations are still reasonable. So one thing which has concerned some market participants is that we've run up too much too fast. And that's true. So they're saying that, yes, the mid-cap index has gone up 19%. The small-cap index has gone up 20% in the last three months. But take a look at the six-year returns of these indices. And then the returns don't look that exorbitant. Uh, the mid-cap index over a six-year period has given a compounded return of 12%, while the small-cap index over a six-year period has given you a CAGR or a compounded return of 7%. Also, despite the late rally um, you know, in the last three months, year-to-date, the Indian markets are still underperforming the global markets in dollar terms. Um, also, one of the big drivers has been the strong inflows into the Indian markets. So they're saying that strong macros in the face of weak global growth and another year of healthy corporate earnings should keep the flows resilient in the Indian markets. So year to date, the FIs have pumped in $11.8 billion. This is calendar year. While the DIIs have pumped in $10.3 billion. And according to Motilal Oswal, flows should remain resilient going forward as well because of our strong macros, good corporate earnings. On the subject of valuations, they started off by saying that valuations are still reasonable. They're saying the Nifty is trading at a forward multiple of 19.2 times. This is at a 5% discount to the long period average. Also, it's trading at a 100% premium to the MSCI emerging market. This is slightly higher than the historical average premium multiples of 70%. But according to Motilal Oswal, premium valuations can sustain. They're raising their portfolio in uh, the weights uh, in their model portfolio in financials, which includes PSU banks, NBFCs and consumption. They're underweight on metals, energy, utilities and neutral on healthcare and telecom. Some of their large ideas will also come up for you on your screen. There you have it. You've got an ICSA bank, ITC, LNT, M&M, Infosys, Ultratech, Avenue Supermarts, Titan, Zomato. And on the mid-cap end of trade, M&M Financial Services, Ashok Leyland, Metro, Indian Hotels and Godrej Properties. So uh, those are some of the bets that Motilal Oswal is uh, making in the large cap and in the mid-cap space. In fact, earlier today, my colleague Lata spoke to Gautam Dugan, the head of research institutional equities at Motilal Oswal Financial Services, and began by asking what are their expectations uh, on the earnings front. Listen in. This quarter uh, basically is going to be a continuation of the trend that we have seen in FY23 as far as uh, big sectors are concerned. Just an additional distortion this time because of what is happening to oil marketing companies. Uh, where you're seeing a substantial increase in profitability because of the marketing margins. So you have to keep that piece aside when you look at the aggregates. Uh, however, on a reported basis, we are estimating a 50% growth for our coverage universe in profits and 25% for Nifty. And as I said, if you keep uh, OMCs aside, the growth is about 12 and 11% for uh, Motla Oswal coverage universe and uh, Nifty earnings. Uh, sectors that are doing well are the same that we have seen for the last three quarters, which is financials and autos, uh, which is continuing the trend that we have seen starting from third quarter of FY23. Consumer is also expected to do well with about a 20% growth, largely a reflection of uh, margin expansion. And we're expecting about 15% kind of a growth in IT as well as pharma. IT, however, is more a reflection of low base because the quarter and quarter trends are going to be quite muted as far as demand and commentary is concerned. And what is pulling down the numbers are basically global commodities like metals and then oil and gas, excluding the OMCs, which are showing a big decline. So metals, we are expecting the profits to halve on a YOY basis and uh, oil and gas also about 20% decline X of OMCs. So that's how the overall picture looks like. There is going to be a margin expansion in many sectors. And I think this trend will uh, perpetuate as we move forward in the rest of the quarters in FY24. Overall, we are still talking about a 20% kind of a growth in Nifty earnings, 16% excluding commodities for the full year FY24. Uh, well, uh, overall, Nifty, you have still brought it down by about 0.5% or something. That's what your report said. Uh, yeah. Any reason why you brought down your Nifty EPS expectation, albeit very marginally? 
Uh, it's not even uh, marginal uh, broad rate, it's just minor tinkering, Lata. So there's a 0 0.7, 0 0.8% cut in FY24 and 0.5% cut in FY25. This is largely a reflection of what is happening in metals profitability in the Nifty uh, profit pool. So if you look at the absolute profit numbers for Nifty that we have, we have cut the numbers by about 5,000 crores in a total profit pool of about 7 lakh 60 odd thousand crores, within which metals profits itself has got cut by about 12,000 crores. So rest of the sectors put together have actually seen a minor upgrade. So auto has seen a minor upgrade, oil and gas has seen a minor upgrade. Banking numbers are very stable. In fact, banking is still looking very strong despite the percentage growth now shrinking because the base is very high now. So profit pool of banks itself, uh, this year we are expecting in Nifty to cross about two and a half trillion and FY25 to about three trillion. I mean, that tells you the scale of the profitability now because five years back, entire Nifty's profit were three and a half trillion. And in FY25, uh, your uh, financials profit pool itself will cross three lakh crores. So uh, it's minor tinkering out there. Okay. Uh, we are going to start with the IT companies. There you expect uh, downbeat uh, uh, guidance as well. Uh, you've already mentioned that uh, in terms of uh, growth itself, IT companies are not going to do too well in terms of EPS growth. Yeah, it's uh, it's well into the numbers now, actually, Lata. In fact, our IT team believes that there can be a minor 100 bips uh, tightening of guidance in Infosys. Uh, the quarter quarter sequential growth on a constant currency basis is also going to be muted in tier one companies uh, in IT. And there are some companies where we are actually expecting a quarter on quarter decline in the dollar revenue growth. So IT uh, demand patterns are still very weak. Uh, decisions are getting deferred on projects and discretionary demand is also coming down there. So what you're actually seeing in IT is basically cost efficiency and vendor consolidation projects uh, taking precedence over the digital transformation project that we had gone used to in CY 2021 and 22. But I think as the uh, scenario gets clear over the next one or two quarters, these companies can come back because they've seen many such uh, uh, cycles in the past and valuations are already looking quite attractive as, we, as far as uh, large cap ID is concerned because the NSE IT index has been underperforming since the beginning of CY 22. But yes, the quarter is going to be muted for them. Yeah. 16%, uh, I think, uh, earnings growth, the, uh, according to your uh, table. Well, uh, uh, Gautam, what about, uh, you know, uh, banks? Uh, you, your note seems to indicate that while you're expecting all banks to do well, your preference for buying is going to be PSU banks now. Absolutely, Lata. That has been the preference for last one year or so. And in fact, in our model portfolio revisions, we further increased the weighting PSU banks. So we had added Bank of Baroda a year back at 86 rupees in our model portfolio. Now at 200 rupees, we have further increased the weight from 2 to 3%. The reason is very simple, Lata. In fact, this quarter also, if you see, while we're expecting a very strong 30% plus profit growth in private banks, we're expecting the profits to double uh, in PSU banks. However, you have to keep one thing in mind when you are looking at financials numbers now. Because quarter on quarter now, the growth will moderate. PSU banks will have one or two quarters more of a low base benefit, but private banks already you will start seeing numbers getting a bit more moderate. In fact, for the fourth quarter of FI24, we're expecting the PSU banks to report just about 10% profit growth and private banks to report about 12% profit growth. But overall, valuation, growth, balance sheet, ROE, you know, overall asset quality framework, if you see, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the sector deserves to have a big overweight. And that's what we've done, actually. We increased the weight in NBFC further in Mahindra Financial, uh, which we had added two, three months back. The stock has done actually very well. It's up 50% since when we added in April. And our conviction remains quite high there. So we've increased the weight further there. So financials and consumption are two sectors where we have further increased our overweight stance and uh, increased it in a very big manner. Okay, so that was a view coming in from Motilal Oswal on first quarter earnings. For the time being, let's uh, cut across to the money control startup conclave, which is underway in Bengaluru. The theme for the panel is fintech in India. And I think uh, Zerodha's Nikhil Kamath, as well as uh, the management from PhonePay, is speaking right now. And, and it's very hard.